Hello viewers from wherever you're watching us from. You're watching QTV, the Gambia's first private TV station, and we are broadcasting from our studios here on Kairaba Avenue, just right behind the QSL main building. I am Alou Sise, and I'm back for your weekly State of Affairs program. This week on the program, we are joined by uh, Mr. Sidi Kanye, who is the general manager of the Gambia Transport Service Company, uh, which is established to provide easy, convenient, and timely uh, movement of goods and people within the country. Mr. Kanye, good to have you on the State of Affairs program. Um, good day, good day to QTV and Mr. Sise, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here to share with your audience and viewers uh, some vital information about Gambia Transport Service Company. Thank you very much. Like you said, I mean, we are going to look into the operations of the GTSC, some of the challenges faced and of course the innovations uh, uh, at the company. But to start with, uh, take us through, how did the idea of the GTSC came about? Um, GTSC, um, acronym, um, with full name, Gambia Transport Service Company, started in 2013 um, um, by Social Security and Housing Finance Corporation. Um, before that, um, we had Gambia Public Transport Corporation, That's GPTC, GPTC. Mm -hmm. and that was liquidated in 2011, mm -hmm. 2011 by the former government and um, it took at least two years gap for GTSC to come into being. Um, I was then part of social security senior management. Okay. When we visited the, uh, the depots of the then GPTC, just to have a look at it, suddenly it occurred to us that there was need to revive yeah formal public transport service in the Gambia. Mm. Observing that Gambia at that time was maybe the only country uh, in organized West Africa, okay. apart from the world owned countries, that uh, did not have a formal public transport public company. We said, well, that will be an ugly side for yeah. one to say we don't have anything like yeah. another GPTC. Yeah. Senegal had Dakar Demdik yeah. and um, Boyant. Yeah. So the management then, under the leadership of Mr. Emil Jiba, mm -hmm. former managing director of social security, mm -hmm. thought it appropriate to think of coming up with this idea to set up GP, GTSC. And um, it was um, supported by subsequent managing directors of social security. Um, I want to mention names here, at yes. least as a tribute to them. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Edward Graham, yeah. um, actually actualized it yeah. and then it was strengthened by his successor Mr. Manja Mohammed yeah, and further strengthened by Mohammed's successor uh, Mr. Abdullah Tambedu mm -hmm. and also the current MD who has given maximum support to the company. So briefly that's the background and um, from there G GTSC started spreading throughout the country mm -hmm. uh, and beyond Gambia. Um, this support from the parent company together with the Gambia government has been very immense and it has taken us where we are today. The GTSC has become a major service provider, in fact, the largest local player in public transport service. From 2013 to today, 10 years now, I mean, up and running, I mean, how will you assess the current uh, transport, uh, trans uh, transportation sector in, in the country? Um, there are still challenges. Okay. The population growth rate has actually surpassed the, let me say, the growth rate of yeah. um, transport service in the Gambia, um, especially the urban areas, where we currently have around 60% of the Gambia's population in Greater Banjul area, okay. from Brikama to Banjul, to Banjul. and the environment. Okay. It's a large concentration of our national population. To mean that Gambia is um, highly urbanized. Mm -hmm. And that is why government and social security thought it fitting to respond to this urban demand for public transport. Mm -hmm. um, we have informal operators, okay. the small taxis, the gele gele owners, and uh, the private second-hand bus users and so on. But uh, GTSC, as the formal transport service provider, uh, is doing its best to close the demand gap. Okay. Uh, if you recall some one or two years ago at the, the Makati Square in yeah. Banjul, yeah. um, GTSC commissioned yeah. um, 33 buses 
it was mainly for urban use. That's the partnership with Espas. Yes, that's the partnership with Espas Motors, and um, that was really highly applauded. Yeah. And it played a key role in stabilizing the frustration of the commuters. Yeah. Of course, we must admit that it did not totally address the demand okay. for this, but it has partly addressed it. Yeah. And um, we still continue to inject more buses. Yeah. Um, as we speak, we have around 120 to 130 buses okay. active. Okay. Uh, some of them for urban use, okay. some of them for um, areas beyond urban areas. That is from Greater Banjul area to uh, the eastern part of the country and the um, northern part of Gambia and beyond. That is Senegal. Okay. So generally, uh, GTS is doing its bit to address public transport demand, but I would say there is still more room for more buses because there is demand for it. Uh, yes. Like you said, you talk about the issue of the augmentation of, uh, of the fleet of buses. I mean, you currently have 120 to 130 active mm -hmm. buses, uh, yeah. as you put it. Mm -hmm. But overall, what has been the major challenges uh, of the transportation uh, sector in this country? Um, generally, the whole world, um, public transport, um, it's not ordinarily profitable. Yeah. This is because of the cost structure. Okay. Um, like GTSC, uh, fuel being our largest cost item, okay. takes about 30 to 40 percent of our revenue. Okay. It's a major, 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 major chip of it. Okay. Um, in many countries, that's where governments intervene mm. to consider supporting public transport companies through some support, tax support. It could be in the form of a subsidy for those operators or other forms of um, tax support. Um, so uh, I would say fuel is our major challenge, cost of fuel, mm -hmm. but that is something we must live with. Okay. Uh, you cannot operate a viable public transport company or an effective one without buying fuel. Yeah you must buy that. And um, that's what exactly what we are doing. Uh, virtually at pump price. Virtually at pump price. Because we enjoy some little bit of discount mm -hmm. through our business engagement with the suppliers. Okay. But I'm trumpeting a message that um, that's an area that any government should consider as support for its public transport outfit. We have other challenges. Uh, infrastructure setup. Okay. Um, in as much as we want to address urban transport demand, okay. if, the, if the infrastructure is not in the right form, uh, you will be inundated with congestion, mm. traffic accidents, and so many other things. So these are things that um, it requires a holistic approach. But government, I would say, at least are doing their bit in a way. Uh, we all hear about the more talked about 20 OIC roads. Yeah. Those roads, if ready, and when ready, uh, will help a lot in easing traffic flow. They are all part of our operational plans whenever they are ready. And um, it will require a lot of other measures too. But um, generally, these are the two major challenges for GTSC, um, fuel and uh, traffic conditions, infrastructure conditions in the Gambia. There are other challenges, but these are the two that, if addressed, GTSC should be in position to, add, to provide seamless and very efficient, effective public transport service. Uh, you talk about the, the, the challenges here. You, you cited, uh, just cited, I mean, the issue of the, the cost of fuel, and then you talk about the infrastructure setup. I mean, yes. who's responsible? Who should take the lead in addressing this issue? Is it the GTSC, Social Security, or the, or the government? I know you all fall under the government, but um, whose who's responsibility is it to take the lead? The government is the master player here. Okay. Um, they are like, they enable everything. They are the enablers. Infrastructure in general is the role of government to provide, together with, of course, local authorities. But it's all government. Social security, limited role. They own the company and they are somehow providing support uh, in many aspects. But that's where I think they can stop. But government is a key player here. And I mentioned that I think they are somehow trying to address it. Okay. Um, that is key, especially the infrastructure bit. The fuel one, the engagements are still on. I know there are challenges um, because whatever government is giving as support in terms of subsidy, okay. uh, it's like government foregoing the much needed revenue mm -hmm. for them. So it's a 
catch 22 situation. Mm -hmm. Government needs the revenue, GTSC needs the support. So we are trying to see how there should be symbiotic relationship in this whole matter. Okay. And, and uh, you talk about the issue of, I mean, the, the, the cost of fail, I mean, the infrastructure. Let's look at the issue of, I mean, is there any national transport uh, service policy or strategy? There is, there is at the moment. Uh, it's being reviewed. Okay. Um, the time it was being formulated, GTSC was in fully operational. Okay. Then it was not seen as part of the government, mainstream government. So the policy is mainly, um, let me say, aligned towards air, sea transport, mm -hmm. and somehow some mention on rail transport, okay. rail. Uh, but now that the GTS is playing that prominent national role, okay. anytime it's being reviewed holistically, I know prominence will be given. Okay. Um, at the moment, uh, Gambia, I think, needs maybe those three major transport modes. And they have to be kind of harmonized, synchronized, which is road transport, which GTSC is a player, and um, sea stroke river transport, which is also a very, very important aspect, which I know government is working on. And uh, of course, the air transport. Rail can be downplayed at the moment, mm -hmm. but I know these three aspects must be given very top consideration. Okay. And, and, and talking about the issue of uh, GTSC not uh, making that much profit at the moment, does this pose any, any threat to the sustainability of this company? Um, knowing the cost structure and the industry we belong, um, it may not be a threat. Okay. Um, many public transport companies are not ordinarily profitable okay. and it's not a profit driven venture. Um, it's mainly a blend of social service with some element of going above the red line to ensure that at least um, you are liquid enough to provide your operations, to support your operations by buying fuel, spare parts and pay salaries and so on. So that's where we are at the moment. We are not making super profit. Mm -hmm. We are just modest about um, positive figures. And um, we think the future looks bright uh, with the way we are going. So no big threat uh, at the moment, uh, so far so good. Uh, I'm talking about issue of paying salary. What is the, the capacity in terms of staffing? Uh, 500 plus. 500 plus. And growing. Growing. Uh, we are expanding the fleet um, year in, year out. I mentioned that we are currently about 130 buses, buses but actually 30, yeah. counting. Yeah. 130 and counting. Okay. Uh, in the next few months, uh, we will be commissioning another set of buses very soon. Okay. God willing. Okay. Uh, and let's now look at the issue of, uh, I mean, like I said, I mean, the public-private uh, cooperation schemes here. In, previously, in the past, I mean, you have partnered with, with SPAS, I mean, to, pre uh, to procure uh, new bosses. bosses. Uh, are you thinking of doing the same again? To, to make uh, the, the target this, number? This way I hinted that um, I'm counting. Yeah. This uh, public-private partnership is an ongoing thing. Okay. I recall during the commissioning of those 33 bosses we procured from SPAS, it was uh, a message trumpeted by the president, mm. President Barrow, that he encourages the private sector as well as uh, the other businesses to mm. collaborate to ensure that at least businesses survive on such partnerships. And I must say here that our GTSC's relationship with SPAS Motors is growing from one strength to another. Okay. Um, two years ago, 33 buses, mm. And uh, very soon, more will be rolled out. And uh, we are looking forward to stronger areas of cooperation. And of course, other suppliers to and other players. Okay. So it's growing. It's important and seems to be the only sure way of doing things. Yes. Uh, you talk about the figure that you have right now. In your own estimate, how many buses do we need to be able to, to meet the expected demand? Uh, um, of your services. Like you said, I mean, 10 years now, I mean, mm -hmm. you have established yourself as a reliable transport company mm -hmm. in the country. I mean, people who travel to the provinces for a uh, new me, for me, I mean, they all choose to travel with the, with the GTSC. Indeed, indeed. Um, there is high demand for our service, no doubt about that. And honestly, uh, because of that high demand, I think we have all witnessed a massive reduction in road accidents, especially mm -hmm. fatal accidents. And to mean that uh, I think we need more buses to satisfy the escalating demand for our service. Um, number of buses 
could matter a lot. Um, I would say boldly that if GTSC can lay hands on minimum of 500 buses, minimum, it will go a long way to, to address the demand for our service. That may not completely address it, but the most important element is the infrastructure setup. You can have million buses, uh, but if, if, if the infrastructure is not in best of forms, mm -hmm. where uh, governments should think of providing dedicated bus lanes for easy mobility, seamless trans transport movement, no congestions and all what not, that would help a lot. Um, so these two are together, they go together. The number of buses you may have, plus the appropriate infrastructure setup, they go together. They go together. So I am sending that message that it's not actually the number of buses alone that matter, but the right infrastructure in place. They go together. And uh, we have seen, I mean, recently you, you signed an MOU with uh, Dakar Demdik. I mean, we know your bus uh, services is, is, uh, is daily traveling to, 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 Dakar. to Dakar. I mean, yes. what, tell us more about this MOU with da Dakar. Dakar Demdik uh, is the transport, let me say, the former transport operator, one of them in Senegal, uh, in fact, the largest. Yeah. Um, they have branches Dakar Demdik, Africa Demdik, mm -hmm. and Senegal Demdik, mm -hmm. all under Dakar Demdik. Mm -hmm. And GTSC is their counterpart in Gambia here. Mm -hmm. The relationship between them had been on for the past six years. Uh, when we signed our first MOU in 2017, and the second version was signed in 2021, and uh, the third version, the most recent one, was signed just last month, October, in Dakar at an event organized by our High Commission mm. in Dakar, uh, where um, private and public sector institutions met to discuss trade and um, economic matters between the two countries. And even the Vice President was the there. The Vice President was there of the Gambia, Mohamed, uh, BS Diallo. His Excellency Mohamed B.S. Diallo, and uh, the Senegalese Prime Minister, yeah. Amadou uh, Mr. Amadouba, uh, together with cabinet minister from both countries mm -hmm. and uh, heads of institutions from both countries as well, including myself. Yeah. Um, during that um, event, we saw an opportunity to sign our revived MOU between us and Dakar Demdik. And uh, that gave rise to GTSC and Dakar Demdik doubling their service coverage okay. between Banjul and Dakar and return. And before that signature, that signing ceremony, uh, we were doing um, two buses per day, per direction. Okay. Two from Banjul, okay. two from the, uh, okay. Dakar for GTSC. But with this one MOU signed, we will be witnessing, in fact, the next few days, an uh, injection of more buses between Banjul and Dakar. Uh, it's going to be four buses per day per direction from both ends to mean a total of eight buses from okay. gtsc okay. will apply that route okay. this okay. was necessitated by our observation that there is very high demand for our banjul dakar service okay. uh, currently if you want to travel between these two destinations uh, if you don't book at least a day or two before yeah. Yeah. you are likely going to miss out but with these four now uh, even if you have an hour or two, mm -hmm. when you have an emergency, okay. you are likely assured that you can go safely with our service. So that's why we were actually um, struggling, agitating to ensure that we get this. But thank God we got it with the support of our two governments. Uh, you will recall that um, July this year, there was a presidential council meeting in Banjul, yeah. um, co-chaired by President Barrow and, and President, President Macha. Macha. And during that meeting, uh, President Barrow sent a message to his brother, Maki, that GTSC is struggling to get more buses on this Dakar route, but because of obstacles, they could not. Uh, President Sal made a declaration that that cannot be, the ECOWAS protocols must be observed to the letter. That's the free movement of goods and, and honestly, services. Honestly, after that, things became relatively very easy with that declaration, mm -hmm. and this is exactly the first steps we are following that led us to Dakar to sign that MOU. Mm -hmm. So we thank the two presidents for standing by their two national operators. 
So do you have any other challenge uh, aside from, I mean, the, like you said, I mean, it, it was really difficult to, to travel from, from, from Gambia to, to Senegal mm -hmm. because of the border check and all those things. Mm -hmm. But at some point also, you were having some challenges from some commercial drivers in Senegal mm -hmm. who weren't happy with the bus services uh, traveling to Dakar because you were taking most of their passengers. Yes. Yeah. No, it's a natural reaction. <laughs> exactly. They are the set class <laughs> drivers, we call them. Yeah. They feel that we are taking their market from them. <laughs> okay. In fact, their rough calculation is that one bus takes the place of seven set, seven class. set classes. Yeah. So um, it's, it's an ongoing engagement. Okay. I'll not call it a battle. They are not our enemies. Yeah. They are actually our partners in a way. They also turn the We complement each other. Yeah. Yes. So it's an yeah. understandable reaction. Yeah. Yeah. But um, we are kind of challenging them that um, if they feel that their market is threatened, what is stopping them from providing even better vehicles than GTS and Dakar okay. Lemdik, okay. then the commuters will be at liberty to select which one to opt for. Yeah. So, uh, but with the governments involved, we don't foresee any stiff challenges now. Previously, we had it before, especially in 2020 mm -hmm. and 2021. It was a very, very difficult uh, matter. Mm -hmm. Um, the media even covered it, yeah. and, um, yeah. but thank God it's being resolved gradually. Okay. But it's an ongoing thing. Uh, when somebody's market is threatened, there is a way you have to react to protect it. But so also there is a way we also have to manage them. But also as passengers, you also look at what is best for exactly. you. I mean, exactly. you travel to Dakar exactly. and then you are in a set class exactly. where you cannot even, you know, yes, so, <laughs> have, so, so. have proper briefing is, is, is something. Exactly. And the safety but, bit. Exactly, the safety yes, bit yes, aspect yes, of it. Yes, but, yes. but now, away from Dakar, I mean, are there other plans to look at other destinations? I mean, we have Casamas, we have Bissau, mm -hmm. Mr. Kanye. Yes, uh, we were well? doing Bissau before. Yeah. But because of the poor infrastructure in okay. that country, um, we had to stop it. Okay. Um, on several occasions, our buses uh, suffered damages oh, okay. because of the poor road network there. Okay. Um, but um, right now, we are reliably informed that they are remarkably improving okay. the conditions there. So okay. once we confirm that we are good to go, okay. we will roll out again. Okay. Um, every now and then, we get reminders from the embassy here okay. that why don't we revive the service. Okay. So it's part of our plans next year, if everything goes well. We are also doing Guinea Conakry up okay. to Kundara. Oh, Kundara, okay. Kundara. And okay. the plan is was to go up to Labe. Labe, okay via Basse. Okay. Uh, again, same road conditions were affecting us, okay. together with frequent informal checkpoints, yeah. which we are going to engage uh, through the right channels, the authorities, to look into that, like what we did with Senegal, which has improved remarkably. Which all boils down to a lack of implementation of the exactly. ECOWAS, ECOWAS protocols, protocols and treaties, free exactly. movement of goods exactly. and people. So within Senegal too, um, we are engaging the authorities in other cities like Touba and Ziegenshore. Okay. Touba is in high gear. Yeah. Um, personally, I was there last year okay. and I met the mayor of Touba okay. and uh, the caliph general. Okay. They have blessed it okay. and um, it's just for us to do the formalities and roll out. Maybe perhaps a, a, a boss per week? Well, well, we are looking at it. I know we're going to do that uh, very soon. Zegan Shore is another destination we are looking at. So whenever there's conducive environment for it, we shall roll out too. Uh, plus others. But at the moment, these are what we have in plan uh, beyond Gambia. Of okay. course, locally, we are also trying to provide service to major settlements, villages and provincial yes, towns. I, I was coming back to that because yes. I, I, I read one of the reports where I said, you know, you're also trying to expand to other destinations yes. just beyond the, 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 non, uh, the actually, major ones. Uh, our plan is wherever there are tar roads or motorable roads, whether tar or not, but as long as they are motorable, we shall be there. I'm seeing as long as I, we I, have saw, I saw Diabugu and... They are all, you know, already running. Yeah. One thing unique about the Diabugu service is that it's the one linking the two bridges in URR, yeah. the Basse Bridge and the, the Koina Bridge. Yeah. And honestly, uh, it has connected those settlements very well. Yeah. Yes, okay. yes. It's, 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 it's interesting. Uh, I mean, uh, away from that, I mean, uh, let's now look at the issue of, I mean, you, you announced that in, in 2024, you were going to introduce what you call, I mean, the smart bus travel ticketing. You also have the TAMO and all those things. I mean, take us through. How far have you gone? Um, yes. In that, in uh, those initiatives? You know, recently we acquired 70 new buses yeah. through another supplier. Yeah. Um, and part of that uh, package is that um, they, are sh they will provide a ticketing software okay. 
um, that will well to, to scrub the current one we have. Okay. And uh, that will go with the use of uh, smart travel cuts. Okay. These travel cuts, we have named, named them locally as uh, TAMO cuts. Okay. TAMO, um, it's a Mandinka word meaning travel. Tuki, travel, yeah. and so on. Um, it's like coined after the ones you have in advanced countries in Europe okay. and US and Asia, in, in the Arab world. Um, UK, they call it oyster, oyster okay. card, huh? and so on. So that's what we want to introduce where we will try to influence our commuters to use less cash transactions okay. and use mainly the card loaded with um, funds, with mm -hmm. money. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have provided validators and machines on board the buses where they will have to just tap in and tap out. Okay. Yes, and um, once you start using that, the advantages are numerous. Um, you, the passenger, will not have that trouble of always being very mindful about your wallet being stolen or lost. Especially with the with the new minkers. Ah, no. so, so <laughs> that's a challenge. Hmm? But also, um, for GTSC as a transport operator, yeah. our revenue will be assured, Excellent. fully accounted for. Okay. No leakages. No leakages, so yeah. No risk okay. and so on. So those are some the other. And um, in terms of the environment, uh, you will lose less papers. It's only cards that are more durable yeah, exactly. and so on. So there are a lot of benefits in it. Of course, uh, you all must admit that Gambia's population is mainly not formally literate. Yeah. That could pose some initial challenges, yes. um, some resistance, mm -hmm. but with proper public sensitization, we hope that there will be a buy-in mm -hmm. to use those cards, which we are about to start very soon. Aggressive marketing um, strategy that will involve uh, QTV and everybody mm -hmm. to help us sensitize the public that uh, these cards are better for all of us as users uh, of the service of GTSC. So are, are, we, are we on target? Are we, are we on course to having, having it in 2024? Our plan is to launch it in November, end of November, okay. this month. This month, okay. That's in about two weeks' time. Okay. And um, once it's launched, um, there will be some experiments. And then by 2024, I would say, inshallah, but without fail, mm -hmm. uh, the Tamu card should be full-fledged. That is the plan. Okay. That is the plan. Okay. Yes. And, and in terms of passengers, I mean, I know sometimes it's not, it's not easy dealing with the public. I mean, when it comes to, I mean, your bus services, like I said, the demand is increasing daily. I mean, how do you deal with, with, with some, of, some of these situations where you have passengers expressing the, the dissatisfaction? We have seen some some images where some, some passengers are, are, are not really happy with the bus services. They talk about, I mean, so many issues, I mean, regarding even the, the stoppage and all those things. How do you deal with these things? Um, <coughs> we live with this every day, uh, where you deal with um, multitude of people. Yeah. Um, we carry thousands of passengers daily uh, within Gambia um, and beyond. Our passengers include people from all walks of life, um, primary school pupils, high school students, university students, uh, members of the public, the elderly, the physically challenged, all what not. Mm -hmm. So naturally, the, their tastes will be different. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a requirement on us as a service provider to listen to all those complaints to see how we can cater for all of them. You cannot have a perfect environment. Um, I recall an incident where a passenger or some passengers were complaining about our driver playing music. Yeah. Loud music, low, low, low volume music, but music. Yeah. Some passenger will say, no, play the music. Yeah. Others so, will say, no. Exactly. So, <laughs> so that's where you have to strike a very good compromise yeah. by engaging each other. Mm -hmm. uh, the beauty with uh, our passengers that Gambia we are, Gambians we are, mm -hmm. We can talk to each other amicably and resolve something amicably. Uh, but it's something that we battle with daily and uh, we try to respond to such queries and we are not claiming to be a perfect institution, which we are not, mm -hmm. but uh, we listen to all complaints and do whatever we can mm -hmm. to address those complaints. Okay. If there are complaints that we are making too many stops, we will look into it and see how to address it. Okay. 
If their complaints our buses are dirty, we'll try to ensure that at least they are relatively kept clean and so on and so forth. Okay. So public complaints are normal for service provision. They are normal. Okay. And uh, any service provider must brace up for it. You must. Thank you very much. Uh, that is uh, C.D. Kanye, who is the general manager of the Gambia Transport Service Company. He is our guest for this week's edition of the State of Affairs program. We will go with a short break, and when we return, discussion continues. Do stay tuned. Technology has always been at the forefront of our lives, and the way we use it has evolved drastically over the years. With the advent of 5G internet, we are entering a new era of technological innovation that promises to transform the way we live, work, and play. 5G internet is capable of providing data speeds up to 100 times faster than 4G, making it the ideal solution for streaming high-quality videos, playing online games, and downloading large files on the go. 5G internet is already transforming cities across the globe, powering smart cities, self-driving cars, and virtual reality experiences that were once thought impossible. 5G internet is also paving the way for Internet of Things, allowing for seamless connectivity between devices and the creation of a truly connected world. For the first time in the Gambia, QCell is bringing tomorrow's technology to you today with the launch of QCell 5G Internet. Get ready to experience the out-of-this-world wonders of QCell's 5G Internet. For more information, call 111. QCell. We innovate. Others follow. Viewers, welcome back from the short break. You're watching QTV, the Gambia's first private TV station, and we are broadcasting from our studios here on Kairaba Avenue. My name is Aliu Sese, and this is your weekly State of Affairs program. Our guest this week is uh, Mr. Sidi Kanye, General Manager of the Gambia Transport uh, Service Company, commonly known as GTSC. I mean, Mr. Kanye, welcome back from that uh, uh, short break. I mean, uh, recently we've also seen you signed uh, an agreement or MOU with the Ministry of Higher Education to help transport I mean, students to the University of the Gambia. How is that agreement going on? Um, so far, so good. Um, it was signed in September. Okay. Um, the Mandinka say an old route mm -hmm. leads to an old village. Yeah. Hmm? Mm -hmm. That's a proverb. Yeah. Um, uh, this is nothing new to GTSC. And it's nothing new to the education sector as well. Yeah. Um, as far back as 2013, we signed an MOU or a contract with Ministry of Education, Basic and Secondary Education. Yeah. That's the, let me call it the original Ministry of Education. Yeah. Meant to provide um, school transport service for primary and high school going students. Mm. And since then, this has been going on very, very well. And um, we are charging very minimum fare, which is $5 is per route per student. $5 is 10 years ago, wow. effectively it's like 50 bucks yeah. or maybe even less, exactly. but we're still charging that, mm -hmm. of course, subject to review. And the rest is subsidized by government. And that has been a very fruitful partnership. So when the Faraba campus movement was being worked on, it happened that um, the movement coincided with us commissioning 70 buses. Mm -hmm. um, I would say God at work for Gambia. Mm -hmm. Because if these 70 buses had not been on the ground, the movement to Faraba without dormitories would have been very, very difficult, if not impossible. Because which other service provider can allocate 15 to 20 buses per day for thousands of students moving from Greater Banjul area to Faraba and back without issues? So I would say it was a very timely intervention. The Minister of Higher Education approved GTSC to provide service similar to what we are providing to the other Minister of Education. Mm -hmm. And of course, being a national call, no option but to respond to it. That's exactly what we did. The contract was signed. And since then, it's been running very well. Is Admittedly, it, at the beginning, there were some teething issues here and there. Yes, I was coming to that as Admittedly, well. Admittedly. Exactly, yeah. Admittedly. But um, it's normal. Uh, we deployed initially based on the numbers initially communicated to us. Okay. That was a smaller number of students. Mm. But when the biggest school, School of Business and Economic yeah. Management also moved. I call it the Chinese population of the yes, university. We, we, we had a very <laughs> short notice. And it took us about three days to adjust. Yeah. And we really adjusted. And since then, no issues. I think the incident happened about 
Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of that particular week, okay. last month. But uh, up to today, so far so good. Okay. So but as, so aside good. from that, do you have any issues relating how you deal with the students? I mean, we know sometimes these are young people that um, are sometimes very emotional and all University those students, uh, at the beginning, some of them were a bit unruly. Okay. Um, maybe maybe going to Faraba was also uh, maybe thing. maybe <laughs> but but honestly I think they have adjusted now. Okay. For the primary and high school students, generally they are friends of GTSC. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we don't have issues with them. Okay. Um, our university students that we expect must put up the best behaviors. Yeah. Some of them initially went off track, okay. but um, right now I think they have started behaving very well. Yes, uh, and um, I was sending a message to them, which I'm going to do again, mm -hmm. that this service is actually meant for them and it's meant to support their education career up to the end, mm -hmm. where they are required to pay only twenty dollars is return, wow. ten going, ten coming. Ordinarily, if you are to use the normal public transport to Faraba, you'll be paid maybe double that amount. Just, just from Westfield to Brickham. Exactly. You, you don't something. have a guarantee of getting it. Yes. The safety, the comfort, and so on. But with this GTSC service, I think they should be very thankful to the authorities. That is GTSC, the education ministry, the government, and so on, for what they have done for them. And they should own it and not to pull it down, not to misbehave on it. They should support it. That's what we expect. So do you have plan to increase the number of buses for them? Um, as long as there is demand and as long as we have the buses, it's okay. Yes. So this is why so I say GTSC is growing. Um, we have to cater for all types of commuters, students, our daddies and aunties and all whatnot and so on and so forth. So as long as there is demand, I'll qualify that by saying as long as we have buses. Okay. We are ready to, to roll out. But aside, aside from the, the, the Ministry of Higher Education and the Ministry of Basic and Secondary Education, do you also have uh, other agreements with perhaps you know, public institutions or companies that would want to hire the service of the GTSC to transport their, their staff to and from home? Yes, currently we have, um, um, we have a pay setter, which is our parent company, Social Security. Okay. Already we've dedicated two of the buses to their staff. Okay transporting them from Brikama End to, to Banjul and their branch offices. Okay. That had been on for the past five, six years or okay. even beyond. Okay. And uh, in the past, we had some engagements with other companies before. Are they paying? They are paying. They are paying. They are paying. Okay. They, are, they are paying. They are paying. Okay. Oh, yes. Okay. Right. They are very liquid that they cannot default. <laughs> they are paying. They are paying. Okay. But also um, with uh, Gambia International Airlines, yes. GIA, GIA at the okay. airport, we are providing this tarmac service to yes, them. Yes, I've seen your buses. Yes, there, yeah. yes. So at least uh, that has really addressed their constraints in terms of uh, passenger transit from the um, uh, aircraft to the terminal building. Okay. Yes. So um, so far so good. So far so good. And we are serving as backup for other institutions who already have their in-house staff transport facilities whenever they have a hiccup okay. they fall back on us to to provide that gpa is one of the gambia port authority yeah, and others yes okay. yes, okay. yes, yes. Uh, and now earlier on you you mentioned about coming back home what you are doing to expand your destinations you talk about the diabugu of course i've seen manka and and other places as well in addition to the already existing de uh, non destination like jara soma mm -hmm. and, and other places but what are you doing to to improve the infrastructure uh at all these destinations. I mean, at some point, people were really concerned about the unhygienic condition at the, at the Brikama, Brikama, Brikama bus station. Uh, the Brikama depot is unique among all our depots okay. in terms of its uh, current condition, environmental condition. A um, lot of factors are at play. Okay. Um, it's not the negligence of GTSC okay. that has warranted this condition, but okay. actually is blamed on the emission of uh, wastewater from the fish market. Okay. That is the main cause of the um, unhygienic conditions there, uh, coupled with the stagnant rainy waters when we don't have any drainage system mm -hmm. around that area. Um, but now that the rains are over, 
and um, we have somehow partly addressed the seepage of wastewater from the fish market. Mm -hmm. the conditions there have improved. Uh, we will prefer it to be in better shape than what it is now, mm -hmm. but because of the congestion. But honestly, I must say with this recent road clearance exercise yeah, going on, exercise, yeah, on, on the uh, conditions there have remarkably improved. Okay. And um, it's now incumbent on GTSC to do their bit to ensure that at least we further improve the image of that place. Uh, it has been an eyesore. Yeah. Uh, we have spent some thousands of dollars to improve on it, but sometimes when the external factors creep in, mm -hmm. they go beyond you. Okay. Yeah, but apart from the Brikama depot, um, all our other depots are in relatively hygienic conditions. Okay. Of course, um, the infrastructure is a bit down, admittedly. Uh, we're trying our best to see how to improve on them. Okay. We've started with Carnifing, and uh, we shall spill to the other ones in due course. Okay. Uh, earlier on, you mentioned, I'm, I'm just taking you back, I mean, you talk about the, the challenges that you are facing. I mean, you talk about the cost of fuel, mm. I mean, like you mentioned. Mm. How do you intend to address this issue? Are you going to increase fares at some point? Or what other means do you have to be able to cover for some of the losses you are making? Fair increase may be inevitable, but okay. even if you are going to do it, we'll be very mindful about its effects on livelihoods. Okay. Um, we'll do it in such a way that, um, if at all we're going to do it, okay. uh, it may be relatively painless, okay. painless increase. Okay. Um, but whatever we can do to maintain fares, we will do that. Um, GTS as a major operator, the largest transport operator in the Gambia, um, we have a role to play in stabilizing prices somehow. Mm -hmm. If you increase fares, let's say by the inflation rate of 15 to 20 percent, naturally that will add to the cost of movement and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, it will affect prices of commodities, directly or indirectly. So in us doing that, adjusting fares significantly, you will be contributing to the high rate of inflation. Mm -hmm. But whatever we can do to ensure that inflation is not caused by us adjusting fares, and whatever we can do to ensure we also operate without much problem, without adjusting fares, mm -hmm. we will do that. We'll do that. But it's something that is on the table. We will not say we will never increase fares, mm -hmm. but if conditions don't warrant it, we will not. But if conditions require it, we will be modest in the adjustment of fares. How much independent is the GTSC from the Social Security and Housing Finance Corporation? Ah, they are the owners of GTSC, okay. Social Security. They sit on the board. Um, they are the chair of the board and some board members. Okay. Uh, but we are a corporate entity okay. registered as a private limited liability company registered. Um, we cannot claim to be completely independent, but in terms of governance, we are. Uh, management is not answerable to management of social security. We have a board mm -hmm. where social security have their seats as the owner of the company, plus other board members uh, from Gambia government because of the relationship we have yeah. with them. Yeah and the private sector members. So we have a board that management is answerable to. So it's not Social Security directly telling us what to do. By the way, Social Security owns several companies, either totally or partially. Um, some banks yeah. and some, some hotels. other hotels. hotels and so on. So it's the same relationship, okay. the same relationship. And it's working very well. Okay. Yes. Okay. But, but but internally, internally, how do you find? I mean, the work environment. I mean, like you say, sometimes change is something that people don't want to see happen yeah. because you know, <laughs> some, some some of them when it happens, I mm. mean, they tend to lose some of the benefits that they are having. Mm. I mean, how are you dealing with this thing uh, at, at GTSC? Sometimes you have people who, who might cooperate with you who believe in your agenda, <laughs> but on the other um, hand, there um, are some people who, who don't believe in your agenda. Always dealing with human behavior is a dicey one. Um, wherever you have human relationship, that environment can never be perfect. Mm. Um, but you, the leader, have to have that extra eye, that extra ear, that extra whatever sense mm -hmm. to look at um, sentiments and manage expectations. 
um, it's not about people resisting change or leadership or so, but it's all about managing expectations. Um, you lead by example, things will be relatively easier for you. But if you fail to lead by example, it becomes difficult for you to lead people um, um, with some bit of comfort or so. Um, as a leader, you should not downplay some of the grapevine discussions. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a message to all my colleagues in the leadership mm -hmm. position. Yeah. Um, there is no smoke without fire. But whatever you can do to put out that fire through your management skills, leadership skills, you do that. Um, I mentioned that we are 500 plus staff yeah. from different backgrounds, different function lines. And the majority of that 500, about 90% are lower cadre staff. Okay. Some educated, some partially educated, some not educated. So that's a very difficult group to manage. Yeah. But so far, so good. You see, the saying that respect the biggest respect. Mm -hmm. You respect those working under you. Naturally, they give you back the same respect. Don't be bossy over your staff. I think that's a, a, any regret over things that you could have, you, you will look back and said, "Oh, I wished I was able to achieve this in 2023." Um, difficult to say. Yeah, difficult to say. Yeah. But it's okay. Interesting. That's yeah. interesting. But but I mean, we are now going into 2024. I yes. mean, what are the plans? I mean, where do you want to see GDSA in 2024? Um, with the massive injection of fleet, we are planning to almost double our revenue base in 2024. We want to grow it to about $500 million per year. Um, correspondingly, the staff role will increase by an extra 100 or so staff. Uh, we are mindful about uh, having escalating cost. Mm -hmm. But that is our plan, that uh, we want to expand our service coverage both locally and beyond. I mentioned them before. Mm -hmm. And in doing that, revenue will go up by maybe twice. And uh, we'll contribute our bit in addressing some of the youth unemployment challenges, the backway challenges and so on. Um, like at GTSC, except if there is no slot, but mm -hmm. any young Gambian who completes grade 12, okay with some relatively acceptable results, okay. you are a candidate for employment at GTSC. Okay. That's our basic, basic criteria. And uh, you have a chance to grow up to any level within the company, up to general manager level. Mm -hmm. So we are looking at 2024 in a very positive way because now we're getting some support from parent company, Social Security and Gambia government. Uh, the fleet is expanding. And uh, the service is being highly patronized by commuters. What else do we have but to ensure that we continue to provide efficient, effective public service, public transport service to Gambians and beyond? I mean, in, in terms of, I mean, workers, I mean, be it government or private, I mean, you have some workers who travel from Big Kama to Banjul daily. Is there any plan, payment plan, for example, a monthly subscription? If I want to, you know, have my own card that I can use monthly, I have enough money, um, I can do my payment and have my card. And is it for the whole month? Do you have those services? That's one of the essence of the <coughs> introduction of the TAMO card, okay. where we will encourage um, even students, university students okay. particularly, uh, and um, civil servants and employees in private sector, employees generally, okay. to use those cards and load them with credit. By the way, the facility we'll have for them okay. is that if you buy that card and load it for a monthly use, okay will give you a good discount okay. and um, you telling people that you don't have fare with you when your card is already loaded okay. yeah, it's already taken care of so it's going to be part of our sensitization to encourage employees in formal sector or even private individuals to make use of the cards and um, it's for their benefit generally it's for their benefit generally um, by extension also mentioning civil service mm -hmm. We will start the re re engagements with them, okay. the civil service authorities, okay. to consider rolling out a special transport scheme for them. 
like the type you have with social security, where we will delegate some fleet of buses okay. uh, for civil servants, um, transporting them from wherever they are to their respective destinations. I think that will also help government realize some some high productivity from those uh, employees. It will assure that there is no serious lateness to work, mm -hmm. no truancy from work, nothing like closing early just to say, I okay. want to get some transport to reach home. So those are things that we are looking at in 2024. It, 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 it's, it's quite, quite, quite in, in, interesting. But I mean, aside from, I mean, the payments that you get from passengers, uh, do you have any other source of uh, revenue? We have, but limited. Okay. Um, I would say 95% of our revenue is from fares, okay. uh, from passengers. Uh, let me say 90%. Then the other percent will be from luggage, mm -hmm. luggage, okay. um, especially the Banjul Dakar route. Yeah. That one is um, is in high demand, okay. and at least um, is forming for the Dakar revenue, about 20% of the revenue, okay. which is quite good and it's growing. In fact, that is encouraging us to look into operating haulage, okay. transporting of uh, goods within Gambia, from Carnifing and beyond. Yeah, okay. um, that's something we are looking into and um, it's a possibility. That could include agricultural produce and uh, other goods and items and so on. Yes. Okay. Then, of course, we're having some revenue from some few adverts here and there, but that's one is limited. It's limited. It's limited. But the main source of um, revenue is from the fares. From the fares. Okay. I, I know we, we're running out of time, but I mean, you're still the general manager of, of GTSC. I mean, what sort of a legacy would you like to leave behind at the end of the day? Um, I've been with the company f since inception, yeah. with a short break. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I am to live today, I want to see behind me a very happy staff. Mm -hmm. That the staff that feels considered in terms of their efforts, mm -hmm. a good salary package, a very good, healthy, friendly work environment. Mm -hmm. That everybody is a friend to everybody. Mm -hmm. No rancor, no push and pull, mm -hmm. and so on. At the moment. Generally, okay, but humans as we are, yeah. we have different uh, mindsets. Mm. But that's the legal side I want to. The human factor to me is the most important element. Um, I want to, let's say, if I leave GTSC anytime, mm. whenever I meet my ex staff, former, mm. former colleagues, mm -hmm. We want to jump at each other and hug each other. That very, I miss you, important. Mr. Kanye, and I say, I miss you, Lamin, yeah. I miss you, Fatu, and so on. Mm. Yes, that's what I want to leave behind, the human relationship, okay. that is key. Qu that is quite key. important. And finally, finally, your message, I mean, to, to Gambians and, of course, your staff, uh, as far as, I mean, the GTS is concerned, of course, social security, your parent, your parent body, what message? Um, yeah. Is to tell everybody that GTSC, Gambia Transport Service Company, <coughs> is a company owned by Social Security and Housing mm -hmm. Finance Corporation. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you know what is the role of social security and what they manage, mm -hmm. they manage uh, contributions paid by employees in formal sector, private and public sectors. And um, that is the Provident Fund and the Pension Scheme and the Injuries Compensation Fund. And these are contributions paid by employees from QTV, the Q Group, mm -hmm. All the hotels, the state-owned enterprises, Gambia government, and so on. So, and those are the monies used by Social Security to invest in GTSC mainly. And uh, to mean that um, those monies belong to the employees, and those monies are the ones invested in GTSC. The message here is that GTSC then belongs to we, the employees in the Gambia. Mm -hmm. So whoever considers him or herself as an employee in formal sector, private and public, should see GTSC as their own. Because it's their monies that 
we are invested in it and may continue to be invested in that company. So if you board our buses, make sure you pay your fare mm -hmm. to support your investment to ensure that there is continuity in service provision. Um, if you don't support it, God forbid that company collapses. You are the loser at the end of the day. Oh. It affects you. Uh, let people see it as their own mm -hmm. and continue supporting it. But also, um, we are a learning institution. Mm -hmm. Let the public, the commuters, and even the non-commuters feel free to give us any observations okay. about GTSC. Mm. Uh, negative, positive feedback are always welcome. Uh, we want to improve on what we are now. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Sidi Kanye. Thank you so much for coming on the program. Uh, well, viewers, with that, we bring an end to this week's edition of your State of Affairs program. Our guest this week was uh, Mr. Sidi Kanye who is the general manager of the Gambia Transport Service Company. Uh, it, I was your host, Ali Osisi, and on behalf of the production team, and, uh, production, uh, production team and everyone here at QTV, we thank you so much for watching this program, and bye for now. Bye-bye. <laughs>